Hello, my name is Nick, and I really sold my sister for a game console. And then I made a career on this, and now I get good money. But let's start from the beginning. My sister Ollie and I are actually friends, despite our two years age difference. And maybe this difference is okay, because I heard stories when siblings with a greater difference do not get along too well. But everything was alright, really. We often went out somewhere. We could either hang in the water park and spend hours riding the slopes in the company of crowds of people, or vice versa, they would go into the woods and have a quiet, silent picnic, when it was strictly forbidden to talk and make sounds. Ollie, as a senior and conscious, usually took on the organizational part of the fun, and I provided the draft power. I dragged everything I needed. Our parents were only happy their kids were busy with useful things, and it seemed they hoped that my sister would keep me from bad company or something like that. But in fact, Ollie rather made me get involved in adventures than stopped. Anyway, such a quiet family. I must say, Ollie was and still remains a pretty girl with a typical model look. Long legs, skinny as a stick, with a very strange gait for my taste. I usually prefer a different type of girl, more feminine and with curves or something. But really, to almost all my friends, she seemed almost a goddess of beauty, an ideal girl. I often had guys with offers of help or friendship, even high school students. So they hoped to get to Ollie through me, who was in no hurry to date someone. In fact, this was the most lousy version of dating, because firstly, I was not going to merge my sister's contacts with everyone, and secondly, Ollie would never start a relationship with some of my friends. It's not that I had lousy friends, she just thinks this can ruin my friendship with someone. Well, this is her thing in fact, but okay. But my skill of getting rid of her gentleman pumped simply exponentially. If we lived in a computer game, I would have already received the title of pickup antivirus or something like that. We somehow lived until I turned 16 and Ollie 18 years old. Often we hung out together, drove away any dubious characters, and really were friends until the day when a strange man came up to us in the park. Well, an ordinary person, just in the children's park there are no men in strict brand suits at a cost equal to the cost of the park. The man immediately went to Ollie and invited her to become a model for his advertising campaign. To say we were surprised is to say nothing. In fact, both me and my sister immediately thought about bad things. Everyone watched TV, the news too, and the worst end of the adventure is slavery. But Ollie did not want to find herself in an ice bath and one kidney. So Ollie started to refuse, and I began to make up threatening phrases that would make the man leave. But he did not leave. On the contrary, he began to insist that my sister was simply obliged to try herself in modeling career. He brought some arguments, told something about big bucks, even gave us a business card of his brother so that if we suddenly decide we could call. In the end, we almost ran home. Ollie immediately threw away the business card, and I kept mine. I don't know why, like a special sense, some kind of thing that a man in a branded suit cannot be bad. And then, already at home, I decided to play Sherlock and check whether the man told us the truth. On the business card was the name of the company, which I immediately googled. Indeed, the company was registered, and it really was an advertising agency. All the contacts and addresses I had to check with pens on the network and in the databases, but this company almost had no negative reviews, and the ones that were hanging were mainly from dissatisfied customers who did not like something at work. Here, the negative reviews convinced me completely, because the fake would not have them at all, or would have, but not like that. In addition, the photographs in their galleries periodically flickered the face of a man who gave me the business card. So he at least worked there, although honestly, it was either the CEO or the owner. And the last point, I decided to check it for honesty. I called the business card and said that my sister agreed, but on condition that the man would buy me a game console. Why exactly it? And nobody knows. It seemed to me then that the $300 console is a direct indicator of well-being, if it's not in credit. So I didn't have it because my parents didn't earn much. So if a person is ready to invest in a console, he cannot be a criminal, because the offender will not spend money on something that he can take without money. The man of course laughed and then said that he would be waiting for us in the park with a console and a contract. 
I went to Ollie, and she agreed, but for decency, she argued on me for the amateur performances. Anyway, as a result of negotiations, I became the owner of the latest game console and an ice cream with caramel, and my sister signed a contract for $2,000 for a photo shoot of some kind of sports store, and the business started. However, later, when Ollie's face began to look on us from the city banners, we both got some wise words from our parents, for not telling them and for climbing into a dangerous business without their control. But it was already too late, and the place of Ollie's manager turned out to be occupied by the small and talented entrepreneur, me. Since then, Ollie has starred in various studios for advertising and for making her own portfolio. And I just showed the most brilliant talent to find her the coolest and the richest customers. And at the same time, I weed out all sorts of perverts. I felt the truth of people on an intuitive level, but I never trusted my intuition completely, preferring to check everything several times by myself. Over time, I even met with local police officers and used their base. He said that he was dreaming of becoming a lawyer and was now trying to figure out how things worked out. So they also helped me for a purely nominal fee of coffee and cookies from my mom. By the way, I really plan to get a law degree because it is extremely useful in my business. Anyway, Ollie always knew if I gave her the customer, things would be at the highest level. And after two years, we made her a superstar in the modeling business. Now, Ollie flies to different countries, walks the best and most expensive podiums of the world, participates in shows of famous designers, and she's all in glamour. I don't know how strange it may look from the outside when she introduces me to everyone as her manager, but judging by the things, her face in every secular fashion chronicle is such an awesome advertisement for little me. Because recently, a line of models has really lined up for me, dreaming of working with the youngest and top manager. I mean, with me. Now I have five girls on a contract, plus my sister. All in an adult way. Tariffs, rates, obligations of the parties, and other paperwork. I find them a safe, well-paid job and make them stars from simple models. While it turns out, I'll say without too much modesty. Despite the fact that my requirements are barbaric and challenging, my girls do not complain. On the contrary, they are trying their best because a crowd of other people want to take their place. And this is weird. No, I'm not some tyrant and despot. I'm just used to focusing on my sister's performance. And I also learned very well during all this time that in any business, there is no place for lying on the couch and doing nothing. Either you work like a horse, or you are eaten by younger, more talented, leggy ones. That is why my beauties work all day and night, but their faces are flashing wherever possible, but I just get my managerial interest and enjoy life. That console is no longer the subject of my desires, and it's too old by the way, but it's still with me, though now in my own apartment, which I bought with the money I earned. This is my reminder of how naive I was, and my kind of talisman for the future, although I have absolutely no time to play it. I went to study law as I planned. Now I am actively studying law and all sorts of important acts in order to make up the right working contracts and agreements. And on all the sides, I am in the absolute plus, except one, my personal life. My personal life is not very good, and it's all about my work, yes. The fact is that the girls I work with are constantly hanging out in my house, or my sister's friends. Actually, Ollie, when she comes home, lives with me, and I do not mind, but every friend thinks I live in paradise. My friends envy me and believe that I date each of the models, or at least had sex a couple of times, but this is absolutely not true. You see, I said that I like very different girls, maybe a little chubby, but to be sure, with curves, and models do not have this. And here is the dilemma. Because not only does everyone think that I'm not free, I also can't bring the beauty I like to my home. I tried, really, but those who go to the apartment usually run away at the sight of the models. And no matter how much I repeat that I don't give a damn about the next girl in a bikini that lie on the sofa and that I don't like it, the girls were scared and ran away. So it turned out that the age of 18, working with top models, I still remain a sad virgin without any personal life. In fact, it's ridiculous, but it's true. So guys, they lie to us when they say that girls like money and fame, 
This is not the point for everyone, but the discrepancy between tastes and reality. But I'm not complaining yet. I still have plans for a fancy car and an annual contract with a fashion house for Ollie. Write in the comments if you ever came across the same stories. How did you find the girls when everything was against you? And girls, if a guy shows some attention to you, then he likes you, even if he's surrounded by a full flower garden of beauties.